Welcome back to Zenith Poker. In this tutorial, we'll be discussing a hand played by Pluribus, the AI bot created by Carganey Mellon University. Here, this is a hand played by Pluribus against Mr. Blue. It folds to Pluribus on the button with 10 8 offsuit. Pluribus opens to 2.5 big blinds. The small blind folds. And the big blind, Mr. Blue, calls with ace knight offsuit. The flop is 10 5 2 with a flush draw. The big blind checks. Pluribus on the button bets half the pot. And Mr. Blue with the backdoor nut plush draw calls. The turn is the three of hearts, completing the flush. Mr. Blue in the big blind checks, and Pluribus checks behind. The river is the queen of spades. Now here, Mr. Blue on the big blind bets 30 big blinds into a 11 big blind pot for a bet of roughly 275% of the pot. And here, Pluribus decides on a call. And Pluribus takes down the pot. Now this is an interesting hand for a few reasons. First off, we can have a look at Pluribus's choice of bet size on the flop, or half pot bet. Next, we can have a look at the decision for Pluribus to check back the turn. And lastly, we can also have a look at the big blind's decision of overbetting this river, and then Pluribus's choice of calling. Now let's have a look at the simulation that I ran earlier. So here I've given the big blind there, Mr. Blue, this range. So we've got roughly 52.2% range, uh, with the exception of Jack plus Ace King, Ace Queen suited, King Queen suited, Ace Jack suited, and a variety of suited hands and offsuit hands in reduced frequency, mainly the suited broadways that may be in three bet at a reasonably high frequency, the suited connectors three bet at a high frequency, and these stronger pocket pairs. For the button pluribus. I've given a 44.1% opening range for the 2.5 big blind open size, and which includes all the pocket pairs, a good chunk of the suited hands, including some of the suited connectors and suited gappers, and many of the strong offsuit hands, such as the ace highs and, and king highs, all the way down to ace 3 offsuit and king 6 offsuit. As for the tree, the total size of the tree was 122 gigabytes. Starting pot, 5.5 big blinds, effective stacks, 97.5 big blinds after the 2.5 big blinds have been put in from preflop. I've removed the donking capacity for the big blind on this flop, uh, as here in this specific spot it's uh, not necessary, as the imposition player will bet quite frequently. The bet sizes I've given for the imposition player I've given 5 bet sizes, 25, 50, 75, 100, and 200. We know that Pluribus didn't have some of these bet sizes, so Pluribus didn't have 25 or 75. Um, Pluribus only had 50, 100, and 200, but I've added these in for completeness. As for the out of position player on the flop, there are 4 possible check raise sizes given to them. 50, 75, 100, and 150. And then moving on to the turn and the river. On the turn, both players, for their first bet, get 5 bet sizes, 25, 50, 100, 150, and 250. And for the river, similarly 5 bet sizes, 25, 50, 100, 150, and 275. For the raise and the 3 bet, there are 50, 100. And on the river, the first raise is 50, 100, and 200. So that comes up to 122 gigabytes. And if you want a copy of this, you can check the link in the description. 
And this tree has been run to a 0.5% exploitability, which is acceptable for a single race pot. So looking at the flop decision, here, Mr. Blue in the big blind checks and Pluribus vets half the pot. And then Mr. Blue decides on a call with the ace high and backdoor nut flush draw. In our sim, when the out of position player checks, here the in position player is betting at a quite a high frequency and the most often used bet size is the quarter pot bet size. But we can see that a wide variety of bet sizes have been used, including the 50%, 75%, and 100% bet size, but the overbet at 200% was not used. We can tell that there will be some differences between how this solution plays to how Pluribus plays. And the reason why that's the case is because Pluribus was not given the 25% bet size on the flop in the single raise pots. And so here Pluribus would not have seen that it could bet a large proportion of its range for a 25% bet size or a small bet size on this flop. And instead many of those hands would have been allocated to other bet sizes or would have checked. As for the decision to bet half the pot, here Pluribus's 10 of spades, 8 of hearts is put into almost all bet sizes at some frequency and is quite frequently bet at half pot. So that's totally acceptable for Pluribus to, to play this way on the flop. And as for the big blinds, we can see that all of the ace nine offsuit with a backdoor flush draw is called and without backdoor flush draw is folded. And that's quite similar for some of the other offsuit aces with the weaker offsuit aces only continuing with the backdoor nut flush draw. And note that the nut flush draws are quite often continued as a call. And so the backdoor nut flush draws should quite often be continued in, in a similar fashion. All right, so looking at the turn, we've got the three of hearts, which completes three to a flush. And so each player will have some flushes in their range. The big blind checks and Pluribus decides to check behind. Back to our sim, we see that the big blind in the solution does not decide to exercise a donking strategy and checks their entire range. And here the button bets roughly half the time and out of the five bet sizes given, decides to bet between 50% and 100% of the pot. As for the 10 of spades, 8 of hearts, it is bet and checked, both at slightly different frequencies, betting at a higher frequency than checking, but there are some checks with this combination. Moving on to the river, here we see quite a large bet size used by Mr. Blue. Mr. Blue decides to bet 30 big blinds into a pot of 11 big blinds, and that's a roughly 275% pot bet. And then Pluribus decides to call. We can have a look in our simulation whether or not our solution agrees. Out of the five bet sizes given to the big blind, the 275% pot bet size was used less than 2% of the time. We can dig a bit deeper and have a look at the different hands that this solution uses for this bet size. And we see that it's quite a polar range, which is what we would expect, including a lot of flushes and straights for value. And for bluffs, there are some weaker pairs, ace highs and king highs. As for the specific combo chosen by Mr. Blue, the ace of hearts, nine of clubs does not make it into the large overbet size. On the other hand, ace nine offsuit with the nine of hearts does sometimes make it in. And part of the reason behind this is the efficiency that this hand makes as a bluff. So when deciding on which bluffs to choose and which blockers those bluffs have, it is often necessary when deciding to block some flushes to 
construct your bluffing range such that your bluffs block a wide range of different flush blockers so your opponent can't just call down with specific combinations. So if we look at all of the bluffs chosen by this solution, we've got some ace nine with the nine of hearts, ace eight with the eight of hearts, ace seven with the seven of hearts. And then there are some other combinations, ace six with the six of hearts and some ace six with the ace of hearts. And for some other pairs, we've got ace five with the five of hearts, all of which will do well to block the possible calling hands in the button's range. So looking at the different flushes in the button's range, while yes, there are plenty of nut flushes, there are also other flushes of different ranks that will continue as a shove. Now against this large bet size, we should consider whether or not ten of spades, eight of hearts is an appropriate bluff catcher. So looking at our solution, the Ten of Spades, Eight of Hearts is played as either a raise all in or a fold. Obviously raising all in would act as a bluff and uh, otherwise it decides to fold. Now in solutions like this, the decision of whether to call or fold a bluff catcher on the river is primarily due to the blockers at play. So we can also see that some of the sets, such as pocket 10s, pocket 5s, and pocket 2s, against this 275% pot bet are also folded. So for pure bluff catches, as in hands between the value range of the opponent and the bluffing range of the opponent, the blockers that the hand has is often the major deciding factor of whether or not to call. So here, if we evaluate the Ten of Spades, Eight of Hearts, we need to think of what kind of blockers that this hand has. And in here in particular, the Ten of Spades, Eight of Hearts has the Eight of Heart blocker. And we have to think about whether or not that Eight of Heart blocker will block more bluffs or more value in the opponent's betting range. And that often depends on how the opponent has constructed their betting range in the first place. In this simulation, the solution has constructed its betting range with a few combinations of a flush with the eight of hearts. Here, ace eight of hearts is in this betting range and eight six of hearts is in this betting range. But more importantly, there are a few different combinations of ace eight offsuit with the eight of hearts that are also in this betting range. And these hands are acting as a bluff. And so when we have the ten of spades eight of hearts, we need to consider whether the eight of hearts blocks more bluffs or if it blocks more value. And in this particular solution, the eight of hearts blocks more bluffs than value. And so the hand is folded at a high frequency. If we look at how the hand plays against other bet sizes, against the one and a half pot over bet, it's always folded. And against a pot size bet, it's almost always called. So as for Pluribus's decision to call this bet, there could be a few things going on. The biggest thing is we know Pluribus wasn't given a 25% pot bet size on the flop. And so the game tree that Pluribus is looking at is different to the game tree that we have solved. Additionally, it is possible that the game tree that we have solved is smaller on the turn in the river than the game tree that Pluribus was looking at. We know from Pluribus's construction that Pluribus could use very many bet sizes on the turn and river, while our simulation only has five or six bet sizes on those streets. So it is possible that Pluribus estimated a slightly different range for the big blind, and so the eight of heart blocker ends up blocking more value than bluffs, and so 
the Ten of Spades, Eight of Hearts, becomes a good enough bluff catcher to call at least some of the time. Overall, I would say that this decision for Pluribus to call the river is a little bit unclear, but I don't think that Pluribus would be making this play at a very high frequency with this hand. Once again, if you would like to get access, once again, if you would like to get access to the simulation, you can check the link in the description. That's the end of this video. Thank you for watching.